I'm having arrived, I call this meeting of the Brockton School Committee to order. And I ask you to please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. There we go. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to tonight's school committee meeting. Uh, at the beginning of each night's meeting, uh, we do have hearing of visitors. This allows members of the public an opportunity to speak directly to the school committee, the superintendent, and the mayor. Um, there is a time limit of three minutes to each speaker, and we'll ask you to please, please honor that tonight, as we do have a number of folks who have signed up to be heard tonight. There is no direct response or debate with the school committee on these statements. All of your statements are taken under advisement for consideration by the school committee, okay? So having said that, I will call the speakers up in the order in which they signed in for tonight's meeting. So our first speaker will be Helen Verga. Good evening, Dr. Verga. Good Great evening, to see you. Mayor. Thank you. I need my notes. Good evening, Mayor Carpenter, Superintendent Smith, and school committee members. My name is Dr. Helen Verga, and I am a resident of the city of Brockton and the proud principal of the Gilmore Early Childhood Center. I am here as a resident and a principal to let you know that I believe that the budget presented last week hurts the children of Brockton. I began my teaching career in 1973. You can do the math as a pre-K teacher of hearing impaired children at Boston School for the Deaf, and I will end my career next year as the Gilmore Early Childhood Center Principal. My 22 years in Brockton Public Schools has been a wonderful second half of my career, but the budget presented to you two weeks ago causes me much pain as well as deep concern. This budget is devastating to our schools and to our children, and it is not the way I believe the city of Brockton takes care of its own. I want to speak about the children at my school. There's a growing body of research about the long-term benefits of early education. Our children come to school less ready to learn than their suburban peers. Their oral language skills, their social emotional development, and their age, many of them are four years old in kindergarten, put them behind even before they walk into their schools. 25 children in an early childhood classroom which is grades pre-K to two, are too many children in any setting, but it is especially detrimental to children in urban schools. And with this budget, the class numbers will be even larger. The discussion about how these cuts impact test scores is frequently heard, but the real impact that should move us to fix this is that a federally mandated, free and appropriate public education for every child in this country exists because the job of schools is to prepare students to be responsible, productive citizens. I beg you, on behalf of the children of the city of Brockton, to reconsider the budget put before you and work together to achieve a solution that meets the needs of our children. Thank you. Our next speaker is Elijah Romulus. Uh, good evening. Good evening. Uh, uh, my name is Elijah Romulus. I come to you uh, simply as a concerned citizen. Last week I was alarmed by the news that the Enterprise release stating 199 teachers received notifications that they would be laid off. Before I begin, I would like to state a few things I'm not doing. I'm not attempting political ploys or trying to raise a ruckus or spread rumors or trying to tarnish anyone's reputation. As I stated, I am a concerned citizen. I have three questions. Do you indeed intend to cut 199 jobs after hiring 130 teachers just the year before? 
if busing is such a large uh, uh, cost, why not open a school in an area to reduce walking radius to a certain number of students, as well as ending busing for some altogether? I ask this because I've heard that there are um, plans to increase the radius of walking to 2.5 miles for middle school students and two miles for grade school students. With the crime in the city, I don't believe that's a good idea. Uh, my third question is, why are you implementing the uh, park test for students who have already have to prepare for the MCAS and two standardized tests will only make it harder for them to even pay attention and try to be successful in school? I felt it was necessary when I heard this news to interview, interview a few people um, as to what they, their reactions were. I asked a school teacher and a parent. Um, the feedback I received was that they did not want the cuts. Um, Brockton already adds 400 new students annually, so cutting teachers just exacerbates the problem of having large classroom sizes. Um, next year, the, the course is to, or in the next couple years, the plan is to imp implement the park testing. Social studies will be focused on this, and yet social studies is one of the subjects that are planned to be cut in half. So if the students are supposed to excel in this new standardized test, then cutting a, a part of that will just make it not possible. Um, also, the park testing will only add more stress onto students that have to take MCAS. I've talked to an aunt who believes that you know their, ki their children have to already deal with MCAS, already have problems stressing over tests, adding another test will only make it worse for them to learn. Um, you know, th I don't believe that the layoffs will help any of these problems. I think that will only exacerbate the problem again. Classes might be able to swell up to 30, 40 students in some cases, and that will only make learning close to impossible with one teacher in the class. I myself have been brought up in um, Brockton Public Schools. I went to the Brookfield, I went to the Ashfield, I went to the Angelo. I was in the TAG program, I went to North Junior High, I went to Brockton High. I graduated, I'm a mechanical engineer right now, so I believe that I am a success story for Brockton High, or Brockton Public Schools. And I believe cutting all of these teachers off will only make the problem worse and there'll be less success stories to, to look at. Um, you know, I come to you today just because I am concerned and it's just, you know, having a city cut 199 educators, and th th apparently this is the only first cuts, and there are proposed other plans to freeze um, positions and, and more cuts. So the fact that all these people might be losing their jobs it will be devastating to the city. You know, just because the state and federal um, budget is cutting doesn't mean that the city shouldn't try to figure out a way to, you know, to buffer this impact. So I ask today that you please um, avoid cutting these teachers so that um, education in Brockton does not suffer. Thank you. Justinville. Hello, good evening. Um, I, like the person just went before me, I believe I'm a success story of the Brock Club School System as well. I've been in the system since first grade. I'm now going to be a senior graduating, or I am a senior graduating this year, and I've received a full rise to the University of Pennsylvania, my Ivy League school of choice. And I feel that if you guys are going to be cutting the teachers that helped me get to this spot, where's the opportunity for the other children to do what I've done or even greater things? I feel like it's absolutely outrageous to have such large class sizes. I already had classes with 30 plus kids, and you can't learn in this environment. And I feel like if you guys want to continue to see your students excel and do well in schools, you can't do all these cuts. It's detrimental for the entire city. Because when you have a generation of kids who are growing up just to fail, what's the city going to come to? Thank you. Our next speaker is Miria Lindsay, and I hope I pronounced that correctly. Yeah, that's okay. Good. All right. Good. Good. Um, 
Hello. Good evening. Good evening. Well, I just, um, I'm kind of reiterating what um, Darlene just said. I am um, to a um, concerned student. I'm in Brockton High. I, I go to Brockton High. I'm a senior. And I've been in the Brockton public school system since first grade. I um, am an immigrant from Haiti. And I don't think that the like I don't think that we should be cutting down um, the staff and I, because in increasing class sizes I don't think that's going to help like um, Darlene just said um, I am already in classes with 30 students like 30 sometimes 33 I'm, I'm part of the IB and AP program I do I, I take IB and AP classes and those classes already just those classes have 30 students sometimes and then 33 students and I don't think um, decreasing the staff size and increasing the um, the student, the amount of students in the classroom is going to help each student focus or help with the one-on-one, -on -one, um, like teacher student um, relationship. And I remember talking to the superintendent, the superintendent, um, I don't know if you remember my face, but I was part of the <laughs> many meetings I had with you. And we uh, talked about the relationship between students and teachers. And I felt, I feel like it's going to be detri detrimental to that relationship. And I don't think that's helping necessarily um, our education. Like um, Darlene said, I'm going, I'm, I'm not going to U UPenn, but um, <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to college, I'm doing biology under the pre-med track, I'm going to UMass Amherst, and I, um, I do believe that my, like where I'm going right now is in part by all these teachers standing behind you. I, I'd be a liar if I said I made it like I made it without them. No, they're part of, <laughs> they're part of why I'm succeeding right now, and I don't think l I'm laying them off or letting them go is going to help other students behind me. Like my brother, I have younger brothers coming after me. It's not going to help them. Like I fear for their education if we're letting stu um, st um, the staff, if we're cutting down the st staff size. So I beg that you reconsider the um, the situation and your decision to lay off these tears. Thank you. I do want to share with you that uh, two weeks ago when I did my entry plan, one of the things I shared with the school committee was the uh, best thing that happened during that entry planning was to listen to the youth voice. And that was very much presented to our school committee members on May 6th. So thank you again to all those students. I also happen to think UMass Amherst is a great school. <laughs> Comparable to them. Um, our next uh, speaker is Matthew Cunningham. Good evening, Mayor Carpenter, Superintendent Smith, and members of the school committee. My name is Matt Cunningham, and I am currently the Brockton High School Choral Director. Two years ago today was one of the happiest days of my life. I graduated from Providence College with my bachelor's degree in music education. Receiving this diploma not only represented four years of hard work, determination, and perseverance, but also meant that I could finally fulfill the dream I had been dreaming since freshman year of high school, to come back to Brockton High and become the Choral Director. In June of last year, this dream came true. It has been a wonderfully rewarding and exciting first year teaching at Brockton High School. The almost 200 students that sing in my four choirs excelled to great heights. They performed in four concerts and are currently preparing for a fifth concert. Brockapella and harmonics competed in the Bay State Show Choir Festival and at numerous events throughout the community, including your inaugural ball, Mayor Carpenter. Concert Choir performed at Symphony Hall twice, including in the MICA Gold Medal sh Showcase. I'd like to now read a letter I received after the final performance of Guys and Dolls this weekend here at Brockton High School. Dear Mr. Cunningham, Thank you doesn't seem fit for all the work you have contributed to this club, but it will have to, have to do because we don't know what else to say. So thank you for your dedication to making us better singers, better actors, but most of all, thank you for making us better people. You are such an inspiration to every last one of us. Having you around us all the time shows us that we can accomplish our goals, just like you have. You inspire us to never hold back and reach for the stars. Seeing you accomplish so much at such a young age has shown us that age is just not a number, and you can never be too young to become successful. Your drive is remarkable, and your passion makes us smile. When so many teachers would have stopped pushing us and settled for mediocre, you kept going and fearlessly led us to become extraordinary. You are without a doubt the brightest light in the BHS Drama Club, and you're going to be shining for many years to come. The way you lead by example has taught us how to become young ladies and gentlemen, but also to still have a good time. You always have a smile on your face, and seeing you get excited over music and theater s gets us that much more excited. You truly are a special person, Mr. C, and an asset not only to this club, but to the entire community. You have watched us grow, and we have had the pleasure of watching you grow, too. And we can't wait to watch you grow even more. With love, the Brockton High School Drama Club seniors. 
As a third generation lifelong Brocktonian and a proud graduate of Brockton High School class of 2008, I would very much like the opportunity to con continue to grow in my career as the Brockton High School Choral Director. Thank you. Our next speaker is two speakers, Kelsey Drown and Jesse DeVoe. We are students of the Brockton High School, and we are freshmen from we are freshmen from the Freshman Executive Committee. Upon hearing about the cuts, we have been a bit worried about our future in our education. With the cuts of teachers, we have been thinking about how our learning will be affected. With 30 kids, it is difficult enough to get the teachers' attention and the grades in a like decent matter so, manner so that we can go back and make changes. And if we have more students, it'll be detrimental to the classroom experience. Also, um, I heard about them possibly cutting the buses, and I personally have multiple cousins and siblings in the Brockton school system, and they are all over the age, all over the grades of grade five. And hearing that they might have to walk home in a town with crime rates like they are, it just isn't comforting to think of them having to walk home alone. Um, so. I just feel like that wouldn't be the best decision to cut so many buses for them. Um, if we were to cut a bunch of extracurricular or even the AP and IB classes, which I've heard about those being cut, those all increase our chances of going to college. And if we got rid of those, that would hurt our chances and make it even harder to get in. And I just wanted to stand for the teachers who were given pink slips in this past week and say that they all make who we will be with our future careers as students. And I wanted to thank all of them. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker is Shoshana Hilson. Shoshana Hilson. Shoshana Wilson. Shoshana. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I stand here as a senior um, of Brockton High, and um, I wrote down, and I stand up for myself, but I'm a senior, and I'm leaving in a week, and I could easily say, well, let the juniors and the sophomores and the freshmen and the incoming seniors deal with it, but that would be wrong, just like it's wrong cutting this budget. I um, am a student of Mr. Cunningham's, and I stand for all teachers. Um, and his students in saying that chorus, even though it's an elective and maybe it not, might not be looked at as well as an English class or a math class, has affected me personally and personally having Mr. Cunningham as a teacher. Um, like that letter said, for so many of us, he's inspired us with his age and just in his passion and everything he does. Um, and I think it's so easy to look at a piece of paper and to see numbers and cut them. But I'm standing here as a student and those numbers are affecting people that have passions just like me. And I think it's wrong to look at that paper and slash the budget just because it, it's sensible when we have other ways of going about it. Um, like I said, I'm Shoshana Wilson and I'm a student leaving, but I'm looking out for students coming in. And I need to say that it's wrong to do this and we're all here to say that. And so that's what I wanted to say. Thank you. I guess it's a testament to the great job that our teachers are doing as our, how articulate our students are. Okay, that completes the hearing of visitors portion uh, of our meeting, so we'll move on to our regular agenda. At, uh, at this point of the meeting, uh, we conduct our consent agenda. This is a manner in which the school committee is able to deal with multiple pieces of routine business by uh, addressing them all at once as a package uh, in order to make the meeting more efficient. Uh, 
any member of the school committee can request that an item in the consent agenda be removed to be considered or discussed individually. Uh, so at this time, uh, I will ask if there are any items that members of the committee would like to be removed from the consent agenda. Ms. Sullivan. Uh, item F. Item F? F. F is yes. in Frank, okay. Yes. Item F. <coughs> any others? Okay, so hearing and seeing no others, I will entertain a motion on the consent agenda minus item F. Motion to approve minus item F. Second. Motion's been properly made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? The consent agenda passes. We'll go back now to item F. Ms. Sullivan. Okay, I just wanted to highlight a couple of things that uh, the community school program is doing. Um, this summer, the Raise Up Basketball is a two-week co-ed program, the last week in July and the first week in August, grades 5 to 12, and it is a Monday through Friday program at 9 to 3 p.m. There's also a new program this year, Kitty Fun Camp, that will be held at the Gilmore Early Childhood Center, and it's ages 3 to 6, and it's a morning program only. Um, the Brockton After Dark will run again this summer, which is run by the mayor's office, July 7th to August 28th, and it's a free program for ages 13 to 20. It's 6 to 9 p.m., dinner and transportation is provided. There's new activities this year, and onla online registration is required uh, on the community school's website. Volunteers are welcome also for this program. We um, had our annual retreat last Wednesday night, which we had a a delicious dinner of steak tips and stuffed chicken breast and it was a, a very nice meal for our community schools and it was re our retreat night and we are also the five-year strategic plan was presented that night for the community schools okay. any further discussion on this item if not we'll entertain a motion <laughs> Second. Properly, uh, there's been a motion properly seconded to improve consent agenda item F. All in favor? Opposed? That item passes. So we'll now move on to the report of the superintendent of schools. Good superintendent evening. Smith. Good evening. Um, as we always begin with, our uh, student representative, uh, Jessica Freeborn, will share with us what's happening at Brockton High School. Happy Tuesday, everyone. Um, first off, I would like to congratulate all the cast members and techies that were involved with the musical, Guys and Dolls, this weekend, as well as our extraordinary pit. I went to the show on Sunday, and it was amazing. The students were so passionate on stage and expressive. You really could not take your eyes off of it. It was just an amazing performance by everyone. So. Okay, um, moving on, yearbooks for the seniors have been distributed and they look incredible. They're so beautiful, as they always are. Um, everyone has been talking about just how great they are, so thank you to Miss Medor and the yearbook committee for your fantastic job. They're awesome. Um, okay, Science MCAS Boot Camp started this week for sophomores. Um, boot Camp is this week and next week from 2.15 to 3.30. Chemistry and Biology Boot Camp is being offered to sophomores who would like to review materials that have been taught all year. I went to boot camp today and already I feel a lot more confident than I did um, yesterday. Um, so that was awesome. We got to take notes and it was just really a great experience to be able to sit there and take notes on things you already did learn, but just to review it and to be like, oh yeah, I learned that. I know exactly what they're talking about. So that was a really good feeling. So that's what we're all doing. So thank you to our wonderful science teachers for giving us this opportunity to review. It's going to help us a lot, I think. And I'm excited because MCAS is coming up. Okay. Um, next Wednesday night is senior prom, so all that are attending have a wonderful time. It's going to be a great night. Um, okay. The last concert for the music department is next Thursday at 7 p.m. This is our fabulous Pops concert. Both choruses, as well as the freshman and advanced concert band will be performing. I can personally say that it will be a phenomenal concert and one that cannot be missed. It is going to be incredible, so make sure to come out and support our music department because we are awesome. 
and then this year is flying by. I cannot believe it is already the end of May. It's going by extremely quickly. Graduation is June 7th for our seniors. While the seniors are getting ready for graduation that day, our juniors will be taking their SATs. So congratulations to our seniors and good luck to all the juniors taking the SATs. And that's what's happening at Brockton High. Very good. And uh, Jessica, I think I <coughs> echo anyone that had an opportunity this Friday, uh, Saturday, or Sunday evening to get out and see uh, guys and dolls. I, I don't know why we even bother with Boston Theater. Um, Brockton High, uh, hands down, um, excellent, uh, wonderful performances. I have to be careful what I say, but I was totally amazed, not just with the male leads, the voices, their dancing. Phenomenal. Usually we attribute that to our young ladies here, but um, it was just terrific. Uh, thank you to Bob Hogan, Vinnie McCreen, uh, Carol, <coughs> uh, Carol Thomas, um, Elaine Kelly, you know, Matt Cunningham. There are so many of you. The parents, it's amazing having had children in the Brockton Public Schools to come back all these years later and see some of the same parent volunteers of when my children were here at Brockton High. So again, uh, congratulations to everybody and thank you, uh, Principal Wolder. Uh, and your staff for always supporting this musical that means so much to the Brockton community. So thanks, Jessica. Okay. Uh, sure, uh -huh. uh, Earlier this evening, uh, there was a public hearing held by the school committee uh, on school choice. I'll uh, lay the groundwork for you, Mr. Michel. Would you want to take it from here? Go right ahead. You handle it. Um, yes, earlier this evening here in the Little Theater there was a um, hearing with respect to school choice. School choice is whether or not we allow students from the outside to come into Brockton High School. Um, we were informed that there, there are 21 participants. Um, there was an opportunity for a, the public uh, to voice their concerns, pro or con. Um, not one member of the public chose to speak on the issue. So the school committee um, voted at the subcommittee hearing to continue to participate uh, with school choice in the years 2014-2015 with the same criteria that is currently in place. That is the report and that would be the motion as well to approve. I think why don't we do them so I think there should be a motion to accept the report first then? Motion to or accept motion the report. To, I'll take a motion to accept the report. Second. Seconded. Motion's been properly made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? And then the second item would be the motion to participate in school choice for the years 2014-2015 with the same criteria currently in place. I have a second on that one. Seconded. Motion properly made and seconded. All in favor? Opposed? That passes unanimously. Thank you. Okay, next on the agenda is the uh, ratification of the Independent Brockton Administrative Assistance and Technical Employees Association on May 8th, voted to ratify their uh, memorandum of agreement. Um, we'll take it from here. Okay, so th this agenda item uh, is in front of the school committee tonight. Uh, the motion would be to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Brockton School Committee and the Independent Brockton Administrative Assistance and Technical Employees for a three-year period from July 1st, 2013 to June 30th, 2016. So I'll entertain a motion on that. Motion to ratify the agreement. Second. Second. Motion's been properly seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Hearing none. Uh, all in favor? Opposed? That's accepted, ratified unanimously. Very good. And I want to thank um, Mrs. Joyce. I know I've been around all fall with all of the negotiations going on. So would you share with us who was on your committee? Well, it changed I, it's changed quite I know. A bit. That's why I'm, I <laughs> was had, hesitant uh, to. We uh, had a, an election in November, so the members changed then. And with the untimely passing of Mr. Healy, uh, we actually went short staffed for a while. So it was Alicia Clark and myself uh, for a while. But we, we, we went, th we 
continue to go through it, and, and I have to thank the members of the uh, bargaining units as well for their patience and understanding <laughs> during these difficult times. But uh, it was nice to get this ratified, nice to come to an agreement, and we look forward to another three years with our admin assistance um, contract in place. I think it's a good contract for both sides. So, And I look forward to working um, in the future with Mr. Jordan. He's joined our group to continue on with the paraprofessionals and the police union um, negotiations. So, okay. And I also echo that. Um, again, uh, many of you in the schools uh, mm -hmm. with your school secretaries who are your administrative assistants, uh, our administrative assistants that support so many of the things that go on in the Brockton Public Schools. I'm sure we couldn't do the job that we do without your support. So again, congratulations to all of you for coming to that agreement. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And we'll move on to also um, the members of the Brockton Education Paraprofessional Association uh, met on April 30th and they voted to ratify their memorandum of agreement. So in a similar manner, I'll entertain a motion to ratify the memorandum of agreement between the Brockton School Committee and the Brockton Education Paraprofessional Association for a one-year period from September 1st, 2013 to August 31st, August 31st of 2014. Motion. Motion to ratify the NOA as stated. One year. Seconded. Motion's been made and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? All in favor? Opposed? Passes unanimously. Okay. Sure, please, Mrs. Just, Choice. Um, just uh, on this particular um, group, we are currently in negotiations for a multi-year contract. Uh, so, in fact, we meet again tomorrow night. So we are starting from square one again, so to speak, um, to be able to go forward with a, um, with a, a multi-year contract with this group as well. Good. Right. And again, Mrs. Joyce, I want to thank you again for working on the paraprofessionals. I believe it's Mr. Henningsen along with you. Custodians. Custodians. It's the same group that worked with the admin. It's, it would be Alicia Clark, um, Austin Jordan, and myself. And uh, again, when we talk about our paraprofessionals, they are, your paraprofessionals are in the classroom with some of our neediest students, our special needs students, they work with our teachers in the classroom, and they certainly make that load a little lighter. Um, they go through many hours of professional development to be able to, to serve our families and our students, uh, and I want to thank you for you know, getting that done, and uh, again, congratulations to our paraprofessionals for continuing to work on their contract. Okay, okay. Um, this brings me to the FY uh, 2015 budget update. And I understand looking out in the audience that many of you are here tonight, you know, for this very reason. And we heard many speakers just come before us to speak about the budget. <coughs> One of the things I will tell you is you heard me mention to all of you that uh, on May 6th I was able to sit here and present the entry plan. And that presented the good about the Brockton Public Schools, that presented some of the challenges for the Brockton Public Schools, and certainly a way to move our district forward. You know, some of the realities that we face, and I want the public to know that I have been out there talking about the realities. So when you look at a district like Brockton, I'm not gonna take tonight to educate everybody. Many of you, of course, I'm looking out there. I know you understand the process. Is Brockton is very reliant on many different funding streams. We're reliant on our state funding. We're reliant on our Title I. We recently had an infusion of what's called race to the top money for the past four years. So what has happened is as we look at the district and prepare for a budget, one of the things I will tell you is the growth that we had last year was about 450 youngsters in our district. And it's wonderful, it um, allowed us to put a school back online when we saw what those numbers were. Many of the times we can't project these numbers coming forward, no matter what resource we look to. But what it brought for us last year was also an infusion of about $11 million based on those new students. And that's based on a factor that the state government puts together. It's based on a, an inflation factor. 
as we put together our October 1st report this year, which again is reporting on students, we had close to another 450 youngsters. I think it was about 440. As we prepared the budget with my bud chief budget officer, Aldo Petronio, we worked very closely with the mayor and Jay Condon, our chief financial officer. We, of course, would have assumed that we would be getting close to another $11 million. As we watched the money coming down through the governor's budget, the house budget, right away we were looking at, because of an inflation factor, which decreased 8.5 million instead of the 11 million that came to Brockton a year ago. That is, before we even start, 2.5 million less than what we were anticipating. Now, with that being said, I do want the public to hear that without having the mayor's budget at that point, I believe it was May 5th, one of the things that I did with uh, my executive team and all of our directors is we had something called a legislative luncheon. And we invited our representatives, uh, our three uh, representatives in the State House. Uh, Senator Tom Kennedy sent his aide, John Duquette. We had new city council members there. We had school committee members that could attend. And one of the things that we put on the table during that presentation was many of the difficulties that we face as an urban district. And what I mean by that, again, a decrease in Title I funding. We have a large homeless population in Brockton topping close to 500, which many of our area districts that surround us do not deal with. And that comes with a very large cost, an unfunded mandate of close to $600,000. We talked about inflation factors. We talked about difficulty with technology. We talked about grants. All of the things that make up our budget. That being said, I then presented uh, to the school committee what I called a, a level services budget. And what that is, is a budget that if we were to try to keep the services that we have right now, what would it take to do that? Now, when I say that to you, it also brings into account things like all of your budgets out there. Even if I want to run my house like I did a year ago, there's been an increase, all of us, an increase in gas, in electricity, in oil. There's an increase in insurance. There's an increase in all of those things. As a school district, when I talk about level services, I also have to assume all of those increases, whether they're step raises, um, whether it's the loss of race to the top funding that was ending this year. All of that brings you to a point where you have to look at your budget. Back on uh, Friday, May 9th, the mayor and I had an opportunity to speak. At that point, it's a starting to look at the budget. The mayor presented his budget to me. I had to work very quickly with the budget that was presented because there was a shortfall. And what happened with the shortfall, and this was in a very short period of time, I believe it was May 9th, Mayor Carpenter, and on May 15th, we have our teachers, and many of you are out there in the audience today, and one of the things in the contract is the teachers have a date of May 15th that we have to let the teachers know at that point in time if we are anticipating there could be a possible layoff. And on May 15th, and I will tell you as I sit here, and this was not something I took lightly. I was very careful working with my leadership team to look at the number. The number was 199, but I want to caution you on that number. On May 15th, that's the number I was dealing with. And like you, and you've heard me talk, many of you have heard me speak, in my 37 years here, I have received six of the so-called pink dreaded slips. And it's, it's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good, and I was very careful to make sure that I crafted a message to the teachers that were, first of all, receiving those pink slips, to tell them how important they were and that the hard work would now begin. I made sure that all of the staff in the Brockton Public Schools also got a letter. We put something up on the website. I had discussions with the Enterprise newspaper where I very clearly stated that although 199 teachers were given pink slips on that day, now the hard work begins. And since that time, I have worked with my executive team every single day. I was out last night talking to 50 parents in was what was called the superintendent's PAC meeting, which I've had four this year. It was a regular scheduled meeting. And you can well imagine that no matter where I go right now, as I'm sure the mayor is facing, we are talking about the budget situations. We are right now looking, and when I hear you talk about 
programs. Understand that we are very careful when I make recommendations next Tuesday night, the first recommendations to the school committee. We understand the importance of you getting into a, a college that you've worked for. We understand the importance of academics. But we are going to have to look at this budget. We have to make very, very tough decisions. There will not be 199 teachers laid off. They are my priority. <laughs> I need a teacher in the classroom with every one of my students with a reasonable class size and able to deliver the services to our students that they deserve in the district. Unfortunately, I need to look at everybody else in the district. I need to look at starting at the top with the superintendent. You heard me all excited this past year trying to resource the district with my school committee and you were very supportive even at the executive team level of looking at curriculum leaders that we brought on board. That was the first cut that I made. I went in there and took a look at administrative positions at this point in the district. That was another cut that we made. We were looking at a facility master plan which you've heard me talk about. The size of our district and growing is something that is very important. At this point, I've talked to the mayor about that. We have some plans, but that was something that immediately was taken off the drawing board at this point. When I tell you I am looking at every single line item in the budget, I don't care if it's a bottle of ink. I don't care if it's paper. I'm talking about also, I've had teachers send me because I actually went and spoke to the BEA Rep Council back on May 5th. And I talked to people about efficiencies. And I've had a number of people that have responded. It's been good information. I am looking to send out another letter to people to talk about those efficiencies that may exist in the district. Um, I have sent out notices and again I've talked to certainly the school committee about right now a hiring freeze is in place. You obviously are aware of the notices that went out to our certified staff. As I said, I'm factoring in attrition through retirement. I'm looking at uh, different incentives. I want to have an opportunity to speak to the unions. So it is important for me to stand here as your superintendent to work very closely with my school committee who have been very supportive, to work with Mayor Carpenter and to somehow come up with a way that we can live with the budget as we go forward. So that is my update at this time uh, on the budget. As I said, I'll be presenting to the school committee Tuesday night. We are busy at work and we are working you know, hour after hour looking at everything, bringing people in the district. I'm told it's one of the first times it's been done this way, that we're bringing in other members. Uh, I'm not cutting things without bringing in. Today we left and I have to have my high school principal come in to talk about things at the high school. I have to bring in my director of technology to talk to me about technology. So there is not going to be a stone unturned when we start to make some of those difficult decisions. Mayor Carpenter? Sure, I'll, I'll just try to add a couple of things from my perspective and my perspective as a first year mayor is probably a little bit different than some previous mayors because I served the past four years on the school committee so I've you know I've been part of the the, the committee working with superintendents to balance school budgets and my first year on the school committee five years ago our deficit that we started with was even larger than this and and uh, so I I understand very clearly what the potential ramifications are of a budget shortfall and how tough some of the decisions are to get a budget balanced. Um, I think if I just comment on a few of the things the superintendent referenced, um, I, I think there in terms of the local spending on the budget, I think there's been a little bit of a misconception. Um, the mayor's net school spending recommendation is essentially the Chapter 70 state aid flowing through the city budget being passed on over to the schools. Um, last year that figure was 156.9 million. This year the figure is 160.6 million. It's almost a 3.7 million dollar increase. So to say that the local budget, the city budget has been slashed to cut the schools is just not accurate. Now having said that, there's clearly a budget shortfall and we do have a budget crisis and I'll just comment on a few of the things that the, uh, that the superintendent commented on um, because they are huge. Um, Title I is down about $2 million. That's federal grant money that's been coming into the schools. That's funds that are lost from the federal government. We had Race to the Top funding the last, was it, Aldo, three years on Race to the Top? Or? 
four years. 2010. Last four years, on race, we had race to the top funding that ran out last year. That's a loss of about one and a half million dollars to the school district. Um, there are labor costs that go up each year. The automatic step raise is built into the union contract, cost about a million dollars this year. That's another million we have to come up with to keep the same number of folks working. Uh, health insurance continues to go up each year. Health insurance is up about a million dollars for the school department employees over last year. That's another million dollars we need to find in order to keep as the superintendent has stated, and I agree, our desired goal of trying to maintain level services for the students in the system. And then really in terms of the state funding, I think that there are a couple things that are fundamentally unfair and hurt the city of Brockton in terms of how the state calculates the Chapter 70 aid we're going to receive. Um, superintendent Smith uh, mentioned one of them, our increasing enrollment. Brockton is one of the fastest growing school districts in the entire state. Three years in a row, we've had a net increase of about 450 students per year. Think about the impact of that. That's basically an elementary school full of students gain that we did not have the year before for three consecutive years. Now, the way that the state funds us on Chapter 70 is the census is taken on October 1st. However many students we have on October 1st, that determines how the aid will be calculated. For next year, not for this year, for next year, that means that those 450 new students that we have this year, we're funding the cost of their education that first year with no reimbursement from the state whatsoever. And we've been absorbing those costs over the last few years. And with now three consecutive years of that kind of growth, the burden gets larger. Now you take it a step further. What about students that come in after October 1st? We're a gateway city. New students are coming into our system every day. This is not like in a lot of the suburbs where, you know, families usually move during the summer because that's convenient and that sort of thing. We have new kids coming into our system every day. After October 1st to the end of the school year, we'll take close to 300 additional new students. We take them on on day one. We're funding them for the rest of this year and all of next year because they won't even count until next October census and we won't get any reimbursement for them until the year after that. So now we have this additional block of students that it's going to be a year and a half to two years that we've been educating these students without getting dime one in Chapter 70 reimbursement from the state. So most school districts around the state have level enrollments or they're actually declining a little. It's only the gateway cities, the six or eight gateway cities that have these dramatically increasing enrollments and Brockton's at the top of that list. Now, Aldo's the, the figures guy, but I played with the numbers just a little bit. And if we assumed we're picking up the cost of 450 students for one year and 300 students for two years that would carry over for a second year, um, that's a budget impact in the area of about $9 million that we're not getting from the state. So I think one of the things we've spoken to the legislators about is that we need this burden that we're carrying and a handful of cities are carrying to be um, recognized and some additional money has to be funded to help school districts like Brockton carry the cost of educating students until the chapter 70 money begins to come in. There used to be a funding mechanism called pothole funds and that was part of the state aid and you could apply if you could show an additional special need um, you could apply for pothole funds but pothole funds don't exist anymore. That's not funded by the state anymore. So our growing population, rapidly growing student enrollment, as compared to most school districts that are staying even or losing a few, is a huge burden to bear in this budget. And as I say, in my rough numbers not being the CFO, I think it's an impact of about $9 million. Um, 
And finally, I think we do have to talk about the impact that Brockton carries a burden of carrying a large percentage of homeless students and, and all the expenses that, that come with that. And, you know, we accept that responsibility willingly and we embrace all students in the system but the fact of the matter is that providing services to these students is more expensive and you know we have several hotels in the city being used as homeless shelters and all of those students are coming into our system and then with McKenney Vento Eventually, when these families get back into a permanent home, most of the time someplace outside of Brockton, under the law, if those students elect to continue their education in Brockton, we are obligated to pay for their transportation from wherever they've relocated to back and forth to Brockton. So if that family lands in Taunton or Fall River or New Bedford or wherever they may end up, we are now obligated to every day provide bus transportation or shuttle transportation for those students to continue uh, to attend schools here. It's another underfunded mandate. We do get some reimbursement, but the reimbursement does not cover the actual cost. So I just think it's important to take a look at, we've got half a dozen major factors that are converging on our budget from various directions all at once. So in terms on the city side, have we slashed or cut the local funding to the schools? No, we haven't. But that doesn't change the fact that because of all these factors we mentioned, the superintendent predicted this year, and I'm going to use round numbers for a minute because again, I'm not, I'm not the financial analyst. Um, but when the superintendent worked with the school committee on what she refers to as a level services budget, she and the school committee projected that we would need about $10 million more than last year in order to keep doing all the things that we do for a student population that's about 500 students higher. So getting an increase of $4 million when you need $10 million leaves you $6 million short. And that is the impact that the school committee and the superintendent and I are dealing with now. And um, I, I've sat on that school committee the past four years. Believe me, I don't think any one of us is sleeping very well at night right now. Um, and a lot of hard work is being done to try to figure out where can we make cuts with a scalpel that will have the least amount of impact on the students in the city and allow us to continue providing the great education that we do in the city of Brockton. Um, on one other side note, the other much smaller part of the budget is what's called non-net school spending, but it does also have a, an important impact. Non-net school spending is money essentially outside the classroom expenses that you're not allowed to spend Chapter 70 money on, primarily transportation, crossing guards, community schools. Um, I did, in the figures that I preliminarily gave to the superintendent about 10 days ago, I did send her a figure that was $500,000 less than what the city sent over for that item last year. Last year, the city sent over 7.3 million. In my preliminary budget this year, it was 6.8 million, a reduction of 500,000. I told the superintendent at that time, and I told the school committee last Tuesday night, that we were still working on the city budget. And I had a commitment to try to restore most or all of that money as we could get the city budget balanced. And I'm pleased to tell you tonight that we have been able to make some cuts in other parts of the city budget and restore that $500,000 into non-net school spending. So the non-net school spending will be level funded at $7.3 million, and it may require some, some adjustments on transportation, but it should not require, it should make up the vast majority of the difference needed to continue to provide the same walk zones and the same busing that we have right now. It could potentially be a loss of one bus. I think that's about it. And I think we might be able to make some savings in some other parts of non-net spending to make that not necessary. Now that's the school committee's job working with the superintendent, but there is a piece of good news there in terms of parents that were concerned about their transportation and walk zones. 
Um, so having said that, th there's still a lot of hard work to be done. Um, I'll tell you as a member, we've got four new members of the school committee, and probably the biggest takeaway, or one of the biggest takeaways for my four years of service in the school committee um, was the tremendous appreciation and respect that I developed for the teachers and all of the people who work in the school system in the incredible work that's done in the schools every day. So there's not one of us up here that is not going to do everything we can to minimize the impact of all of these different reductions in funding and shortfalls uh, that we're faced with this year. And uh, I know that the superintendent and her team are working every day, the school committee is working, and I've been working with the people on my side to try to come up with other ideas to find other sources of revenue that we can try to get over to the schools. So having said that, um, I'll turn it back to the superintendent and well, we have a, Mr. Mitchell, our next your next budget meeting is scheduled for? Tuesday night. Fi so the Finance Committee will be meeting again on Tuesday, and they'll continue to work facing the challenges that we're facing. And thank you, Mayor Carpenter. And as you said, we continue to work together. I, I will work with my Deputy Superintendent, Mike Thomas, because as you say, you know, the increase with the busing is also, you know, an increase in students, and we'll need to take a look at that, and I'll report back to you, and we'll work as hard as we can to make sure every student is within a reasonable walk zone and is able to get a bus, and I'll report back to the school committee on Tuesday night with that new information. But before I finish, one of the things I want to say to everybody is most of you know that I, I've lived in the city for over 30 years. And one of the things I will not do is that we have many services in the city of Brockton that we all need. If we have a fire, we need the fire department to respond to our needs at our home. Obviously, public safety is, is huge in our city, and we're making great gains, and the police are very, very important. I'm not going to sit here and pit one group against another, but you have hired me as your superintendent. And one of the things I will say to you is in the past two years, I have close to a thousand new students sitting in the Brockton Public Schools. So with that said, somebody has to advocate for the children in every possible way. And that is something that, again, I will not let up on. I will continue to look at grants. Um, I will post information on the website. I met with, as I said, about 50 parents last evening. Uh, a number of school committee members were there. Um, as the mayor alluded to, back on May 5th, we did have information that we gave our legislative delegation because we have to work together. This is information about some of the challenges. This is information I'll be happy to put up on the website. And one of the things that the parents in the community asked me last evening was as we go through the process to make sure that they were partners as they also are out there supporting our children. So I will try to get information up on the website that is respectful and very clear about the process uh, that we're going through. And as the one of the things I'll leave you, one of the last things, and I never thought I would say this to you as superintendent. I was here in 1980 when you had the case of Webby versus Dukakis. And Webby was a young girl that attended Brockton High. Her mother was a teacher and her father was the head librarian in Brockton. And they started to talk about the inequities in funding for especially districts like Brockton. When <coughs> Robin Webby left the Brockton Public Schools, a number of years later, you had a school committee member named, I believe it was Scott McDuffie. And his daughter Jamie, who is now a Brockton teacher, was sitting up at Brockton High like many of you out there. And she had students sitting on radiators in classrooms, not enough textbooks. And the McDuffie case is what brought about the change in Chapter 70 funding. And for many years, Brockton was very pleased that with that funding, we were able to support our children just like some of the wealthier communities. So maybe it is time to take a look at that case. Maybe we are the lead plaintiff. But as the mayor said, Maybe it's time to bring together gateway cities with superintendents, with mayors, with the legislative delegation, because this isn't going away. You know, this is going to be a difficult budget season in itself, but it isn't going away. And we need to, again, work together to make sure that we are proud of the education that we give to our children here in Brockton. So thank you, Mayor Carpenter. Mr. Minichella. I would just like to reiterate that uh, everything that the public has heard this evening is absolutely true. Um, you have um, people that are very vested in the city, um, this committee, this mayor, the superintendent, 
are all supportive of every employee in the Brockton Public Schools and our students. Uh, we wouldn't be doing this if we didn't uh, have our hearts in, in the right place. Be assured that what, um, what uh, we plan to do is certainly to advocate. Um, in good times and in bad, unfortunately these situations come and they're cyclical. So we plan, we have already had discussions with our state delegation. Um, we continue to speak with um, our local officials. We continue, we are going to be reaching out to our federal officials because to be quite frank, a lot of the issues you see in the Brockton Public Schools and in the city of Brockton are due to issues at the federal level that aren't being addressed. Um, so we take on this challenge willingly. So you know, we don't expect anyone to cry for any of us because we plan to do the hard work and we always will. And I hope you always feel that we support you um, because that's what we try to do. But um, the, the fight has just started. But unfortunately, we're placed in situations where as the numbers flow, and it is a, it, it is a, it is a vicious process. You, you get these preliminary numbers and you have to make decisions at the moment. And things change, just like tonight. The mayor is informing us that there's some movement with respect to the busing situation. Now that's a new piece of information. But there will be more there will be more data, there will be more adjustments that, that will take place in the future. So it, it, it's not a stagnant situation, it's a flowing situation. And, and please understand that um, we do support you and we all are vested in the city of Brockton and we want our schools to succeed because the schools have always been the shining light in Brockton and that basically is, I think, the identity of this city, the Brockton Public Schools and the people that live here in Brockton. So. What else? All right, you're okay to move on. Oh, okay, items, to, um, to, items to refer to subcommittee. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is the opportunity for any members of the school committee if they have a specific item or topic well, that they would like to refer to, to a subcommittee. The transportation subcommittee, or do we need to hold off on that um, in light of what we're hearing with respect to the numbers? And if I could have I think Mrs. Joyce, you're the chair of that, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah, let's see how it um, pans up the Tuesday's meeting, and then we can always uh, set something up after that meeting. Okay, great. See how much of an impact we're going to be facing with the new, in light of the new information. Okay. So I'll take it then. No items, so do you have anything uh, just, that you would just like to Just two other to things I'd like okay. to, you know, we, we talk about things that we go to. Um, I do want to also congratulate our uh, Davis School. Uh, Friday night I had the opportunity, and I think they staged it Thursday and Friday night, a uh, Willie, Willie Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I Correct. It was, again, wonderful, um, excellent job. Uh, Principal Darlene Campbell and her staff, you know, prepares those youngsters so when they come up to Brockton High School, they're ready for the kind of production I saw there on Saturday night. So congratulations to our Davis School. I also want to bring to your attention that our uh, Louis F. Angelo School, uh, Principal uh, Marcia uh, Serpa, I uh, finally have received the National Association for the Education of Young Children accreditation. And this is an accreditation process that they went through, I believe, a year ago, Deputy Superintendent Barry. And so we're very, very proud that, again, a group comes in and they look at the standards for early childhood education, for the quality of the educational program, certainly at that site. And I want to congratulate them for all of their hard work. We're very proud of what they do each and every day. And that's my report tonight. Okay. Uh, under new business, uh, there was a finance subcommittee meeting uh, held earlier this evening. Do we have... Uh, Chart presenting a report on that, Mr. Mitchell? No. Chartwells. Oh, Chartwells. Chartwells. I'm sorry. Chartwells. I'm thinking finance. What are we talking about? Chartwells. Oh. Yes, Chartwells. Okay. Um, yes, there was a, um, a meeting at uh, 6 o'clock this evening. We had a presentation of Chartwells. Chartwells presented a um, 
a very positive report with respect to the uh, food service uh, contract we have with them. Uh, they are operating and hitting um, all of their benchmarks with respect to financial issues. The um, school committee uh, asked some questions to see how the operations were um, conducting or changing due to the uh, change with respect to dietary requirements at the federal level. And even though um, there have been changes in the dietary um, uh, items, meaning that some of the, um, the, the items, the sweet items that kids used to really enjoy uh, being replaced with healthier items, they are still uh, meeting the benchmarks that they, um, uh, that they set for themselves. So we, uh, at that meeting, voted to extend their contract coming into next year as a requirement and um, the committee unanimously voted uh, in favor of that. Uh, that is the report. So I would make a motion to accept the report. Second. Motion has been made and properly seconded. All in favor? Opposed? That passes. And so, uh, then do we need to I'll also vote on the specifics? And to oh, do you need on a, that you help me with that, Tom? Go ahead. Mr. Petronio, do we need to, do we need to do a, um, a motion specifically with respect to that number, the 1.149, or? No, just that you've, uh, you've said a new call. Okay. Okay, great. So, so we're I good? Guess we're all, I guess we're good then. Okay. Excellent. Uh, do any other members have any other items under new business? Mr. Robinson. Thank you. Um, I just uh, I wanted to um, share on Saturday I was able to uh, visit the Barrett Russell School. Um, obviously the school that we set up this year for our very youngest students, our kindergarten center. Um, there was an excellent training um, and a training that many of our other elementary schools have taken part in. Um, and it was for uh, creating trauma sensitive learning environments. Um, uh, the principal from the Baker was there. Um, a trainer from Mass Advocates for Children who created this, uh, this model and um, about 30 of their staff members, um, staff members in, that included the principal, vice principal, adjustment counselors, teachers, uh, but admin assistants, paras, their school nurse, um, and in the training essentially is, is designed to help schools um, establish an environment that is sensitive to some of the trauma that, that our most vulnerable students often encounter. Um, both in and outside of school. Um, you think about something last week like uh, the three students who were, who were hit um, by a car crossing the road. There's a bus full of students who saw that take place. Those students are expected, like every other student, to continue on their way to school um, and just go on with their school day. Um, some students won't be impacted by something like that, and some will be significantly impacted. And to create learning environments that are sensitive to those types of needs, I think, is a very important thing. Um, even more important to me was there were seven teachers at that school who received RIF notices, and um, four of them, three days, two days after receiving that RIF notice, came to a Saturday training at their school um, to help meet these needs of their students, not even knowing whether or not they'll be here next year. Um, this is an important issue for me, the social and emotional needs of our students. Um, and and uh, it was heartening to, to not just see that school committed to that kind of training, but the teachers um, in that school as well. Um, and kind of on, a, on another note, um, I'd just like to, and, and it's kind of been subversively shared, but as these issues evolve, um, please contact us. If you have questions or you have concerns, our numbers are listed on the city website. They're available through the school district. Um, our emails are public. Um, call us with your concerns. Um, CC us on, on letters that you send to whoever you send them to. Um, if you hear about something and you want to know whether it's true, pick up the phone and call me. I'll tell you what I know. Um, attend these meetings. This is great to see so many people out here tonight. Um, all of our meetings are open meetings. And it's very rare that we have this many people at any one of our meetings. And I like to think that a lot of the business, and in fact most of the business that we do is important to the function of our school district, to our students and our families. Um, so I would just encourage that from everybody. Um, but, and, and yeah. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, Thank anyone you. else under new business? Mrs. Joyce. Uh, just to kind of, um, work off of 
a little bit more information that um, Andy had shared. Our next finance meeting, I know it was brought up a little bit, but it's at 6.30 and it's at the Unknown School. And that's where the real work happens, um, not so much as at the full school committee meeting, but that's where we have an open dialogue. We talk about the line items, we talk about the cuts, we talk about the rationale behind what we're proposing for the budget. So if you really want to know what's going on with the budget, come to those subcommittee meetings. Uh, the next one is next Tuesday at the Arnone School in the theater at 6.30. So I hope we see a lot of you there. Is there no other new business? So I'll entertain a motion. I th think we have one more item on no. the supplemental calendar. No, it's been, del no. It's been deleted. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. Motion to adjourn. <laughs> motion properly made and seconded. All in favor? Close. Meeting is adjourned.